Alright, what's up guys? It's Tyler here and um, today we're going to be doing a video on my top 5 light painting tools that are not essential but really good starters to get into light painting. If you don't know, light photography is pretty much illuminating your subject in a dark environment while using a long shutter speed. So in however long you are taking the picture, the sensor sees all the light that you are painting and that burns that into the sensor. This is then condensed into a picture and then your subject will be illuminated if you painted them for long enough. This means you can get some really cool effects at nighttime, and you can illuminate your subjects in environments that you normally would not be able to take pictures of them in. Alright, so coming in at number one is just a regular old item that most of you probably have thrown around your house or something. It's going to be an incandescent flashlight. So why this is at number one is probably because it's the most cheap and easy to find item on this list. Now being incandescent, it has a warmer tone to the light, which means it will give people and other objects a warmer, more orange feel, which is great for when you're doing portraits. If you want to uh, light someone at night, this is a really great one to add a little bit more color to their face and just give them a more lively look. Coming in at number two is a very similar product, which is an LED flashlight. So why I separated the LED flashlight and the incandescent flashlight is because they're used for very different tasks. I use the LED flashlight for lighting large areas um, when you want to get a lot of light to something, say a house or a car you're trying to light, and you don't want that warmer tone that the incandescent light gives you. Now this next item can come in many different forms, and that is an on-camera flash. Now why on-camera flashes are useful is because you can use them to freeze motion. So if you want someone to stand in a position right when you uh, are taking the picture, you can turn on the on-camera flash, have them stand in that position, and then fire it, and that'll freeze them in your light painting, and then you can move around, use some other lights, and make some cool effects with that. On top of on-camera flash, you can also have an off-camera flash, which is pretty much just a more versatile on-camera flash that is brighter, and can be manipulated to point different directions or even remotely fired. Now, although the off-camera flash is nice, it is also the most expensive on this list, so if you cannot afford this or cannot get your hands on one, it's not the end of the world, and you can do these tricks with a bunch of other lights. So, coming in number four is going to be something might throw you off a little bit, and that's LED finger lights. Now, why I love these so much is because they're so inexpensive and perfect for writing words. Now I got this pack of like 40 and it was only 8 bucks on Amazon. They're perfect for writing words and other objects because of the small point where the light comes from. It's almost like writing with a pencil in the air. You can just draw with these, make whatever shapes, and it comes out with nice crisp lines and they're just super easy and inexpensive to use. Now this last object at number 5 is going to be an LED light strip of some sort. Now this is one that I made and I'm sure a lot of you know about these for either hanging them up in a dorm or just putting them around the house and they're great for photos. As you can see here they're super bright and what I have in here is a PVC pipe that's wet on the inside and then I spray painted black on the outside so all the light reflects off the inside giving a nice smooth light and then I have this DC battery pack it holds eight batteries, and this is just so I can have it wireless. It came with a plug that you can plug into an outlet, so if you're doing something indoors, you can use an extension cord. This is just an optional thing, so I can use it outside or wherever I want to go. What's great about these is that you can give a colorful look to anything you're light painting, really. You can just turn them on with the remote, and there's also a little switch on here. You can change the colors to all these different choices that they have. You can bring down the brightness, bring up the brightness, you can do a lot of stuff with this, and it's just super effective for doing more creative and funky photos that are going to kind of elevate your photography and make them stand out from the rest. So here are just some examples and comparisons of the different tools that I just previously mentioned. So here I'm using the flash and LED finger light technique to freeze my subject and then draw those swirls. Here I'm using the LED finger lights again to make an orb. And then in the next photo, I am actually writing on my Instagram handle. And this was all done with the finger lights that were shown in this video. 
All right, so here's an example of the LED light compared to the incandescent light. So LED is on the left and incandescent is on the right. And you can see how the incandescent light is much more orange, which will help when you want your subject to stand out from the background more. So the incandescent light would be a great option for that. This next example is just another one to show how the incandescent light makes the subject stand out from the background, which was illuminated by the LED light. Now this next one is a pretty fun one where I use the light bar to create a rainbow on and underneath my car and it just shows you how creative you can be with these light paintings. This last picture is one of my all-time favorites and I'm just really proud of this. It is done with a light bar at some random bridge by my house and again it's just another example of how these tools don't make or break your photography. It's more of how you use these tools to make good photography. And on that note, I'd like to say thank you, and I hope these tools help your light painting photography. And if they do, follow me on Instagram at photography and tag me in some of your photos.